Hey everyone, welcome back to the table. Today we're looking at Robin Hood and the Merry Men. Now Robin Hood and the Merry Men is a semi-cooperative competitive game where players are going to attempt to thwart the Sheriff and Prince John from gathering strength in the gathering sites, so amassing strength in the gathering sites, or taxing a road to depletion. Now if either of those two conditions are met during the game, the game ends and all players lose. So it is really important that players work together, but also competitively to try to score points, but ensure that they don't lose. Now at the end of the hero phase, if a gathering site is full of guards, that is when that condition is met. And if at any time all of the coins are removed from a road, the game ends immediately. The game plays over five rounds. There are two phases to the game. You have your Merry Men phase and your Hero phase. Now in the Merry Men phase, players will use these multi-use action cards to take actions at different locations. And so when you take, a lo when you take an action at a location with a hideout, you'll actually discard this card and you will take the associated action. So this would be build a barricade or build a road or gain an additional loot. So if I were to go to the town square, which is where you get to rob the rich to give back to the poor, I would roll these three dice and I need a hit. I got it. If I wanted to keep going, you lose a dice and you keep rolling. There's another hit. I would get two plus one gives me three loot tokens. So from the green bag, I would draw three loot tokens and gain the resources on those. So it is a really great way of gathering resources very quickly. However, if you fail a roll, you will go to the dungeon. So be very careful. Ensure that you have distraction tokens to reroll dice if you need to, and keep an eye on that. Additionally, there are other gathering sites where you can gather tools, distraction tokens, wood, iron, and weapons. Weapons are crucial to Robin Hood and the Merry Men because you need to be able to fight during your hero phase. So. If you wanted to come gather a weapon, you would place, if you didn't have one for the hideout, you could go to the main gathering site. And if you do, you must play a card into your passive pile. Now playing a card into your passive pile is kind of saving it. You're storing it up for a later turn. So it's really important that you do this action because later in the game, you're going to want to be able to take these actions because you may not have that particular action in your hand of cards. So after players have finished gathering resources, or used all of their merry men. Again, you have three to start the game. Here's where you build your barricades and your traps. You would place a merry men here and discard the associated resource cost to build a trap or a barricade. So let's talk about traps and barricades. When you build a, a trap, it goes to the first available slot and this is going to trap guards when they land there. Additionally, these are one-time bonus effects so when you build these and you unlock them, you'll gain those effects. Now barricades go on roads and they are going to help you they are going to help you stop carriages from entering the castle. And when you unlock your different barricades, here's your fourth worker, gain two on the reputation track. These two are gain at the beginning of the round, gain a resource, at the beginning of the round, gain a loot token. So really important that you start building these out as quickly as possible, not only for your own benefit, but for the groups as you can try to stop the sheriff as quickly as possible. And then let's go ahead and take a look at the envoy action. If you were to send a meeple up here to the envoy action, you would actually discard three weapons, two silver pennies, and a resource, and these are going to help you complete King Richard's task, tasks. Each player has three at the beginning of the game, and so each merry men you send up there will allow you to score one task. So they have different in-game objectives that you can try to complete. After all players have finished gathering resources during the Merry Men phase, players will enter the hero phase. And this is where you get to play out the hero that you selected at the beginning of the game. So you have Little John or Will Scarlet, Jane Fortune, and Robin Hood. So you will actually get to take two actions with your hero meeple, but before you do that, players will draft these weapon dice. Now you can have up to four weapon dice. So if you've gathered weapons before, then you can only have a max of four. So the first player would take one, going around it's a snake draft, the last player gets two, and then it comes back to the first player who takes their last. So you would store these in your lair and use them during this uh, phase. Before you actually get to take your hero actions, each player at the beginning of their turn will draw and resolve a sheriff card. Now this 
is how the sheriff's going to take his actions for the turn. So he moves from his tower and he's going to go to the weapon storage location. Then we place a royal guard in the first spot of the town square, which is actually going to arrest my meeple, which means I have to give up a resource into the coffers. And so if I or my opponent saves me from arrest, they'll gain victory points and a resource. But if they don't save me, I will actually go to the dungeon. So you really need to be cognizant of that fact. And then we're going to activate roads. So if the card has a road activation, you would move the carriage to the next barricade. We're able to stop it. However, we draw a new carriage from the bag and place it at the beginning of the road. I would then be, out, be able to take my hero action. So with these dice, I can rob the carriages, but the dice have to match the color or I can fight royal guards. Now, when you fight royal guards, let's go up here to the town square. You can roll dice. I'll roll one bow to try to save my player. And there's a hit. So I will actually capture that royal guard and my meeple is safe from, a, from being sent to the dungeon. Now, why do you want royal guards? Because there's these ransom tiles. Now you can turn in these guards for these benefits. So I could turn in a guard for two tools or three guards for five victory points. And those are changed at the beginning of every, every round. Additionally, you can use your dice to rob the carriages. You would need two dice, you need one hit. So there's two hits and this carriage would get uh, robbed. I then have the choice on where I want to place it on this row column. If I placed it here, I'd get two silver pennies and a resource of my choice. However, if a carriage enters the castle without it being robbed, it goes to the next available spot, top to bottom, left to right, and it taxes that road equal to the silver pennies. So we would remove two silver pennies from that road. And so players need to be very, very aware of where they sit on this, on this carriage lot because when it's full, depending on the player count, the sheriff will tax the entire town. So for each carriage that you robbed, he will activate that many roads and it can be devastating. If players have robbed five, six, seven carriages, he'll do five, six, seven activations of his roads and players could lose. So you really have to keep into account how many you're letting through strategically and how many you're going to rob. So after you have taken your hero actions, and again, anytime you see this icon, it means your hero can go there. So you can actually participate in an archery contest. So you roll three skills dice and you need one hit, then two hits, and then three hits to finish it out. So there's my hit. I could stop and take a silver penny or I could keep going. If you finish and you're able to hit this, you score five victory points and three silver bennies. You can also come over and break your meeples out of jail. So you would discard a distraction token to gain that many dice, and then you need one success, two success, three successes based on the level. So again, there are so, so many actions that players can take, both in the merry men phase and in the hero phase. There is a ton of replayability as far as the different paths that you can try to take based on King Richard's tasks and the game will change because players need to, depending on who's at the table, you'll either play competitively, more competitively, or you'll play more cooperatively. It really just depends and it adds a fantastic dynamic to the game. At the end of the game, after five rounds, you will score points equal to your, your level on the bracket. So as players, as players move up, They'll score points, so for every Envoy, it'd be seven, and that's however many you have up here. This would be for every barricade you built, and then for every trap you built. So there is a lot of options to score points both in the gameplay itself during the five rounds and scoring points at the end of the game. So this has been your overview of Robin Hood and the Merry Men. I hope that it gave you a good idea of what you can expect. Again, absolutely phenomenal artwork. Anybody that likes Raiders of the North Sea, worker placement with some dice rolling, definitely give this game a look. It's on Kickstarter right now.